Welcome everybody, this is How to English, Teach and Learn with Gav and Em. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions stated are personal and references will be given when necessary. Em, I am so sad to say this is the final episode of 2021. By 2021. I'm looking forward to 2022, Gav, to be honest with you. Are you? Have you not had a good year? Yeah, it's been all right. Probably better than 2020, if I'm honest, but I'm still looking to the future. So don't be sad, Gav. Don't be sad. Be optimistic because good things are coming. You're right, Em. I am happy and a little bit sad to be saying goodbye to 2021 because we've had a fabulous year. We've had some really nice episodes. I agree with you there. It's been educational, it's been inspirational, and it's been fun. It's been buckets of fun. (laughs) Yes. We should probably tell people what today is all about. All right, Gav, you go ahead. So as you know, Em, last episode, we asked our teacher and student listeners and readers to the transcription to contribute a memorable moment in the classroom that they might like to share with us. And we got lots. We did. We got, shall I read the names of the fabulous teachers and learners that we got contributions from? We got one from Vitor, Carla, Barbara, Ellie, Fatime, Hedrick, Mariana and Sanya. Thank you all. They were gold. They were so fabulous. I really enjoyed them. There's some really good stories there. And if you haven't heard them, please go back. Or even if you have heard them, go and listen to them again because they're so much fun. So check them out on YouTube, Spotify, IGTV or wherever you get your podcasts. And we've had so many responses to our request for memorable moments in the classroom or online that we've had to make a double episode. Yay! I love double episodes. And as it's a very special time of year, I'm sure everybody has got some free time to sit down and listen to their favourite educational podcast featuring the most wonderful hosts, Gav and M. Hmm, that's nice. So are you going to hand me over the information so I can introduce this week's Moments? Would you like me to pass the speaker's baton to you, Em? Yes, please. So you can take over? Yes, my turn. Right. Em? My turn. Go. (laughs) (laughs) And before we start, Em? Yeah, Gav, go on. Do you you want to tell us about a memorable moment? Oh. Or are you going to do that later? No, yeah, okay. One more from me. Well, can I say... It's not just one, it's many, but it's all one thing. Well, we've only got about 25 minutes, so you better be quick. Oh, that was my intro. I'm just saying, like, it's the same thing, and it happens many times. But it's so special when it happens. And it's that moment where one of your students comes to you after the lesson, or even during the lesson, or texts you, or writes you an email, and says... Would you like to come to my house for dinner? Oh. Would you like to have a drink after the lesson? That's lovely. Or would you like to meet my brother or my niece or my dog? Even if you're online, it's when students say, oh, yeah, you see this painting on the wall. This is from my great, great grandmother and she painted it when she was five. I, For me, those moments are magic. The moments when the students want you in their lives and they they feel they can trust you and they're ready to allow you in. For me, that is the biggest honour and it always makes me feel a bit emotional when it happens because it's like you've crossed that line in a good way. <laughs> like You haven't crossed a bad line, but you've crossed into that realm of friendship. What a lovely thought. Yeah, people are lovely. They are, and that's why we love working with them. Yeah, exactly. And I don't push it, you know. I don't push it. I don't drop hints. 
I don't say, oh, yeah, I love chocolate cake. Oh, I saw a really good one at that shop and, hmm, be nice to go there with some. No, I don't do that. So you mean you get to that point where you're so familiar with the student and they're so comfortable with you that, yeah, they start treating you like a friend or somebody they can trust. That is really nice. That's a really good point where you go to that next step of friendship and mentor. Yeah, that's right. That gives me tingles. I was getting a little goosebumps then, Em. Were you? Yeah. Just a little bit. I know exactly what you mean. It's so sweet. It is. Yeah. Okay. So now officially I can have the stage platform. You've got the spotlight, Em. Why don't you introduce the next memorable moment from one of our teacher followers? Our first one for our second episode of Memorable Moments comes from La Doris at improve underscore my underscore pronunciation. Ready? I am. Hi guys, my name is Ladoris and I teach children and adults English pronunciation. And one of my favorite memorable moments is when a kid came to class one day, he just looked defeated before we even started working on his pronunciation. And I had my wig on, I had my red lip gloss on and it was making him smile and laugh. And I just explained to him that in order for your mouth to make new sounds, you have to change some things in your mouth. It doesn't really want to do that. You just need to make it and we have had fun and you know what by the end of class he was making the correct English sound and the look on his face was just I'm proud I did it and the icing on the cake was when class was over I was shutting down my computer and I and I saw a message from his mom and it said thank you Ladoris you are amazing thank you for everything and that right there is a memorable moment for me because I am making a difference not only in adults but in children's lives as well so that they can have new opportunities in their life. Remember that you can do it. What a nice one that was Gav. What a good one to start us off. That was absolutely lovely. I think it's really important to be fun, entertaining while being educating educational yeah absolutely i was smiling at that story just listening to it it was fun so i think that ladoris can channel that into the teaching make the student smile laugh that's really a good skill that's an amazing skill to be able to do that to relax the student because that's no, learning isn't going to happen if the student isn't feeling relaxed or comfortable. That's it. That's the key to learning. I absolutely agree. They sound like really fun lessons. And also those tips of making the new shapes with your mouth in order to produce the English sounds correctly. I think Ladoris's lessons sound like so much fun. And I can really visualise them as well, the way she explains it. So next up is Cindy at Cindy underscore ELT. Hi Gavin M. My teachable moment came a few weeks ago with a new student. We'd only had a few classes and at the beginning of one class she said she had something important to tell me and that was that she had actually found herself beginning to think in English and that was something new for her. It had never happened before in her English learning experience. Uh, So much so that she had said a few English words to her Spanish-speaking husband without realising it. And she said, what made the difference um, compared to other experiences that she had in the past that she viewed as a bit negative is that in my classes, which are held online, I always had my camera on and I was always smiling and she could always see that I was enjoying the process or the class itself. And it really struck me that it doesn't make me superior as an educator at all. That's not why I'm mentioning this. But sometimes we give too much importance as educators to the content of our delivery, what we're actually bringing across in classes as information. And not so much in terms of our attitude or how we express ourselves or facial expressions and what we transmit. But it's a powerful lesson in terms of our energy, how our students feed off the energy that we have. If we have a positive building energy, our students will feed off of that and it will have a transformative effect on them. 
That's right, it's all about bringing that energy to the classroom. If you're feeling positive, the student will feed off of that and hopefully you'll get that back in return. Cindy, that's a really, really good point. It's contagious, isn't it? There are so many different teachers out there, but if you don't enjoy the job, it's so obvious, isn't it? And I think what I'm getting from all of our contributions is how much these teachers and learners are enjoying what they do they are absolutely and that's really inspiring that's right it makes such a difference to switch your camera on so you're engaging directly you're making eye contact in the same way that we're sharing our lives with our students and we expect them to do the same absolutely and it can be intimate online it doesn't have to be this cold way of teaching So I think that's a really good thing to remember. And I love that story about the student speaking to her Spanish-speaking husband in English. Often what happens in my lessons, Em, is the student will suddenly switch to their own language because they're so relaxed and so comfortable. And I actually take that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. So it's part of your brain that's just getting so comfortable with the language that you're not even thinking about it. You're Mm -hmm. just doing what feels right. Mm -hmm. And isn't that a great moment when that happens in English? Yeah, that's a really good point. Thanks for that, Cindy. Next, we have Taravat at Tinglish underscore me. Well, it's Taravat from Tinglish underscore me. And I'm recording this for How to English Pod. So first of all, shout out to you guys and let's get started. Well, my most memorable moment during my English learning course is referred to the time when me and my friends were decorating the class actually uh the halloween was in two days so we decided to make some decorations to surprise our teacher and something like that but we had no idea about the power cut which happened you know a few minutes later just after we started the decoration so it quite surprised us and we didn't you know expect such a thing but we didn't gave up and we continued the decoration with you know um our cell phones flashlights in complete darkness. Consider this fact that, you know, apart from that gloomy atmosphere, the darkness of the institute's backyard was, you know, distracting us, so we couldn't really focus on our work. But the bravest girl of our class asked us to continue, and the electricity, I remember she said, the electricity issue will be sold out there, so there's no worries about that. But later on, I mean, two two minutes later, yeah, (laughs) We heard somebody walking. Actually, the sound was being heard from the backyard. You know, we had no other choice but to stay there without moving and stare at the open window. You know, it seems like that we were waiting for something. And the funniest thing is that, you know, we weren't wrong about our expectations. A head just popped up. You know, actually, it all appeared that it was my close friend in costume and she nearly shouted, Happy Halloween. So I never forget, you know, me and my classmate's face at that moment. So it's one of the memories of my English, you know, English learning course that I never forget it. Thanks for listening. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> that was hilarious. Imagine that on Halloween, <laughs> all dark, power cut, decorating the classroom, and suddenly a head pops up at the window. <laughs> I think I would scream. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So I think we should take away from this one, just be resourceful. Be adaptable, flexible, and roll with the punches. Is I don't know if that's the right phrase, but just um, whatever life gives you, make lemonade, if that's how it goes. I don't know, but make the most of a bad situation. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ev. As educators, we try to create the environment for our students, but students also do the same thing from their side. So as Taravat described in her story... She created the environment. She created the atmosphere of this Halloween night experience. And it's just really exciting. Lovely. We have Monifa from JA English Coach next. All right. So for me, the most memorable moment, of course, outside of, you know, meeting different people and learning about different cultures, what stood out for me was when I got my first private client. And it wasn't necessarily about getting that first private client. It's more about where it went from there. You know, I would have developed a relationship with him over time. And from there, he actually reached out to me and asked me to teach 
another family member, which was his son. And I was very happy to do that. And then after teaching his son for some time, his wife asked me to start teaching her also. And to this day, we are very close. I still teach them. And I would have heard the difference, the growth, the changes. I mean, I'm hearing this boy turn into a young man. It's just been amazing for me just being on that journey with them. And even for me in my personal journey, they would have been there with me as well. They have helped me with starting my personal business in terms of, you know, going through the website, telling me if it's okay and just, you know, going over things. So for me, that's what stood out. I love building relationships with my clients because at the end of the day, I want them to understand that I am, you know, very genuine in what I do and it comes from the heart. Wow. That's a testament, isn't it, to successful teaching when you get the whole family involved. Lovely experience. Yeah, that does happen, Em. And one student leads to the next student, which leads to the next student. And suddenly, before you realise it, you're teaching the entire family and half of their relatives. Yeah, we don't really have business cards. Well, some people do. But I mean, your business card as a teacher is the... Word of mouth. Yeah, yeah of your students you make a good impression that then gets you more work and then before you know it yeah you're teaching a lot of people that know each other it's a really great thing when a student gets a recommendation from another student that their teacher is really good yeah because many teachers do start off working for language schools and eventually they find their own clients as Monifa mentioned And you end up being a freelancer, working for yourself, and you have a business. And yeah, it's a really exciting way to go, if that's the direction you want to go. Yeah. Okay, Gav. So our next one is from Ivana at ucionica.englescog.ivana. Hi guys, I'm Ivana, I'm from Uchonica Angleskog and I uh, come from Serbia. I teach English, which is probably the most obvious thing I could say so far. However, uh, I really do think that English is the most fascinating subject one can teach because uh, whenever I teach somebody uh, something I taught a new inside out, they actually provide me with a new fresh perspective and they ask me so many uh, beautiful questions that uh, lead me out of my comfort zone, uh, which is something I always seek, uh, and uh, I definitely am very devoted to the language that uh, is always and constantly expanding, uh, and I think that uh, when uh, uh, when, uh, when we speak, uh, the choice of our words uh, says more about us than our looks or anything else that we could uh, actually show so i think that this is the most uh, beautiful thing one can do just to connect with others to share and to feel that love that comes through uh, talking with others and connecting on a deeper level well that's absolutely wonderful i totally agree with ivana it's about getting to a deeper level through language it's not about what you look like It's not about your appearance in the world. It's really about how you connect using language, using words. And us as language teachers and also the language students will realize that they can develop these skills. They can teach these skills. They can learn these skills. And that's really, really exciting. I'm definitely going to play this one to my students because what Ivana says about getting out of your comfort zone And that's what she wants. And I wish my students wanted that too, because really that's how you make progress. And it might not be comfortable for a little while, but you really see results when you do that. It's clear from Ivana that she really loves what she's doing. And that's great. Yeah, she really likes that challenge of being put on the spot by her students when they question her and say, Okay, what does this mean? Can you describe it to me? How is it different from this thing? That really is a challenge for all teachers. We need that. We need that from our students. It's great. Keeps you on your toes. Em, now I'm going to introduce Milena at Teacher Milena. Let's go. 
Well, um, I have had amazing teaching and learning moments with my students, but I have to say that one of the most memorable was um, a student. She is in her 70s already, and she was a student of mine a while ago, uh, some time ago. And this year she reached me, she wanted to come back, she wanted to uh, achieve a higher level of English. She insisted on the message that she was not able to speak English yet, and I was her last hope. And so I scheduled our first uh, our first meeting because it was like two years that I, I hadn't seen her. So I was not sure what she has or hadn't done what she had or hadn't done uh, all over the years. So on that meeting, she started talking to me in English, explaining that she was using all the strategies that I had taught her and she still had all the materials that I used with her. What she didn't realize was she was using English with me all the time and she insisted in English that she couldn't speak English. So that was my aha moment because I was sure, I, I was so sure that everything I had done with her was right. It was proof right there. Wonderful. Just shows, doesn't it, that you don't really end when you stop a course or a lesson these people can come back at any time and it's just amazing that we have this kind of job where you can pick up again with someone and see the progress, help them develop that and just go on this journey together really. That's what I'm getting from that one. I love the way that Milena describes how the student didn't have the confidence and she didn't think she could speak English but really... Her English was fabulous. She just needed to be reminded, you know, you've got these skills already. You've already learned this. You just need to go and practice and use this language. And clearly, this story demonstrates how successful the teacher was and also the student. Yeah, I think we should be teacher slash enablers. Wow. Now, Em, we've got Una from Norsimo Svedski Englesk. My most memorable experience when it comes to teaching English is definitely a bit more general on one side and that is simply seeing my students grow more confident and come out of their shell, especially when it comes to speaking English comfortably. On the other side, I do have a more specific memorable teaching English moment and that is an occasion where I had a student in her mid-30s, let's say, who was having so much fun in our classes, who was speaking very confidently, comfortably after just a few of our classes that even her six-year-old daughter decided to join us and see what the fun is all about. So that gave me a great deal of satisfaction and also a lot of self-confidence in return as an English teacher. I would not change this career for absolutely anything in the world. Neither would I, Una. Neither would I. And I love that moment as well when students come out of their shell. Isn't that just the best thing, mm -hmm. Gav? It is, absolutely. Again, it's that word of mouth or when you see somebody else really enjoying an experience, then you think, oh, I want to be part of that as well. So you end up with the mother and the daughter and they're both having lessons together. That's just magical experience, Em. Yeah, when a six-year-old wants to participate, you know you're doing it right. In an English lesson? Wow! <laughs> em, the next one is from Wanda at WA Workshops. Hi, this is Wanda Atkins from WA Workshops. One moment that I can think of, there are so many moments, it's hard to find just one. So I'll take one that's actually recent. Recently, um, I've been coaching English. When you say coaching English, it's just really to get people to feel more inspired and trust themselves to actually speak. Um, and I tried this in a, a school for music, cinema, and sound. So there were students from 20 to 21 years old who are learning how to do these things, but they have to do it in English at the same time because their clients, their future clients will be English speakers. So what I decided to do with them was to have them create a sound. So I brought in, of course, the steel drum and all different instruments together 
and gave them two days to create a song. Um, they've never been given this opportunity to do this before, so they had never played these instruments before. And um, it was amazing to see how they put things together. But I didn't tell them the end, what they were supposed to do at the end, which was to actually create a slam to go with the, the music that they created. And they're like, okay, we can do that. We can do it in French. And we can, no, 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 in English. And to my surprise, it was, it, it's, oh, it's, it's crazy what they did. They came up with three slams for the song that wasn't very long, but it was really pertinent to what was going on with them at that moment. How do they want it to change the future? And it was just for them, just watching their faces as they were recording themselves, because we set up actually a sound studio to do it. And they did it. They did it. They just surpassed what they thought they could do and came up with three slams for one song. So for me, that, that be, <laughs> that's the best moment. Surpassing what they thought they could do is absolutely amazing because as Wanda said, you have that ability, but you have to trust yourself. And if as a teacher, you can allow that and make your students feel confident you can stand back and just see what they can produce. And that sounds absolutely incredible. Yeah, I can really picture all those students up together with Wanda's steel drum and young people producing music. And the slam, I did have to check him. A slam is where you speak or sing words over music. Wow. So producing three of them at that event was really cool. Really amazing. What an achievement. So it reminds us that we're not only mentors or educators, teachers, but we are coaches. We're encouraging our students and we're bringing the best out of them so they can be the best people that they can. Um, we've got one more. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, this is Helen at Helen Teaches ENG. Do you remember Helen? Of course, I remember Helen. Helen was kind enough to contribute to episode eight of season two called Spaces. That is correct. Brilliant episode. Mm, it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, go back, check it out if you haven't heard it. If you have heard it, listen again. Definitely worth it. Let's listen to Helen and their memorable moment. Hello, everyone. This is Helen from Helen Teaches ENG. Uh, thank you very much, Gavin M., for continuing to make this great podcast. A memorable moment in the classroom happened to me in 2018, working at a language academy in Spain, teaching a language skills lesson to four B1 level teenage boys. I used a recording about Amelia Earhart, and I had stuck up pictures of Amelia and a plane to establish context and try to catch their interest. And one of the boys, wandered to the front of the classroom and drew a penis on the board and the whole class started laughing <laughs> i froze for a second looked at the drawing looked at him as he grinned and sat back down and i panicked for a terrible second and then i instinctively responded by drawing wings on the penis to make it a plane <laughs> <laughs> the class went silent for a second and then they all started howling with laughter and i told them Pilots aren't only men, you know. <laughs> we recovered and the class continued as planned. And I took him aside after class uh, and encouraged him to explain his mood and what happened. And it turned out that that particular boy had been bullied at school that day. And I realized that he'd just been trying to assert some power and control over his life. And by accepting and blowing off that incident instead of disciplining him, I hooked him back into the lesson and supported him emotionally without meaning to. It impacted the way that I saw behavior management, and it still makes me laugh to this day. <laughs> oh, wow, that was that was an emotional roller coaster. That story, <laughs> I'm almost crying now because wow. I laughed a lot and then felt like, oh, that was that was a real moment. What an amazing one to finish on, Gav. That is inspirational, isn't it? Just something so small that can potentially ruin an entire class. But Helen dealt with that incredibly well and really had an impact on that student oh okay that was a beautiful moment i would definitely freeze and i would hopefully i wouldn't shout the kid and say get out of my classroom but mm. deal with it as helen did i would never think to draw weeks on it <laughs> that's just genius <laughs> yeah 
So that was wonderful. That was a really, really good story. And Helen totally dealt with that the right way. Just speak to the kids. Again, we're not just teachers. We're not just mentors. We're not only coaches. Mm. We're also there to support our students, to help them, to guide them through the difficult times in their lives, as well as the easy parts, and support them through that language and uh, just kindness, friendship, you know what I mean. Well said, Gav. I mean, it's just such a human element in all of these stories. There is that theme running through, isn't there? That this human element and just be kind and remember that. Yeah, we're not we're not just robots teaching out of books. Oh, very heartwarming, Gav. Yeah, I've very been touched. Yeah. So I'm going to finish with my own story, which is definitely not as good as the stories I've already heard. But I thought it would be just a nice little way to finish Because it's something that happens, hopefully, frequently, for all teachers and educators, that one time I was teaching a group, and I think they were quite an advanced business class, because I remember we were using a business book at the time, and there was some vocab in there, and I thought, I'm not sure this is going to be very useful. But I went ahead, taught it, we were doing a reading task, I checked they knew all the words, and one of the words that stood out was to quash. Uh Uh-huh. Do you know that word, Em? I do. Quash, it's to... I don't know exactly how to explain. Put an end to, to suppress. Like quash an argument? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Or perhaps, I always think of it like the police quashed the protest Uh by, I don't know, arresting everybody. Right. So it's kind of political, quite high-level English, and... Anyway, we went through the lesson, I taught it, students seemed quite happy, although I thought, "Eh, I'm not sure how useful that language was. The next week, one of those students came up to me right at the beginning of the lesson and said, Gav, I can't believe it. We were having a meeting last week and one of the managers said, we need to quash this story about our company before it ruins us. (laughs) And she knew exactly what the word meant. Okay, wow, what a great word to teach. I know, what are the chances? <laughs> so it's always reassuring when you get that back from the student and you think, I am not wasting my time by spending all this energy and effort into teaching these very high level, very rare, seldomly used words, but they're there and you often find them in newspapers, you'll hear it on the news and fortunately it came up in this meeting the student had And she totally understood it. So I was really, really pleased. And your student had a moment probably at that point thinking, oh, wow, this is what I need to do. I need to learn these obscure high level words for these moments. I wonder what the company had done. I know. How interesting. Anyway, (laughs) can't talk about it. Can't move on. It was quashed anyway. It was quashed, yeah. sure. So before we finish, Em, before you introduce the final song of the final show of this year... I want to thank everybody for participating in the pod over 2021. We at How to English Podcast, Teach and Learn with Gav, that's me, and M. That's me. We want to thank everybody and we want to wish them a very, very happy new year. And we're looking forward to sharing our knowledge and featuring loads more wonderful teachers and learners in 2022. So if you haven't already found us, have a look on Instagram. We're there on Facebook and go to YouTube and you can listen and read the shows. They're all available. Go back through the catalogue if you haven't heard everything. Tell a friend, tell your students, tell your other teacher friends, spread the word. That's it. Tell your parents, tell your children, tell your co-workers, tell your classmates. Your neighbours. Share, share the podcast with everybody. (laughs) Yeah. So, Gav, this brings us to our final song. And I know this is one of your favourites. Possibly your favourite. I love this song. It's going to be stuck in my head for the next few weeks now. (laughs) It's a really nice one for vocabulary. It comes from Emma. Great name, by the way. Emma at Wizbusters. And definitely check out Wizbusters. Go to YouTube. Em. What's at Wizbusters website and YouTube channel? They specialise in vocabulary for GRE, GMAT, 
LSAT and SAT exams and their videos are very comprehensive. Check them out. They are based on The Economist and Forbes and HBR Top Thousand Words. Wow, so that's it's all very cool. Coming from a very good source. They also produce videos explaining Google Sheets and Excel and lots of graphs and charts. Good for business, good for finance. That sounds amazing. So Wizbusters have made a version of The 12 Days of Christmas. Yay! And we both love this song. Go to YouTube, put on the song, sing your heart out. It's so much fun. And there's some animated poops. <laughs> yes, and animojis. Not emojis, animojis. What are they, Gav? Animated emojis. Animated animal emojis. Oh, okay. Animojis. Yeah, lots of uh, unicorns and tortoises and stuff like that. Thank you very much, Wizbusters. Thank you. And everybody else, we'll see you next year. See you next year, Em. On the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love sent to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love sent to me three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves And a partridge in a pear tree On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me six geese a laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love sent to me Seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying, five golden rings Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves And a partridge in a pear tree On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me Eight maids are milking, seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying, five golden rings. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me nine ladies dancing, eight maids are milking, seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying, five. French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the tenth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge. Partridge in a pear tree. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love sent to me eleven pipers piping, ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me Twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping Ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing Eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming Six geese a laying, five golden rings Four calling birds, three 
French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree.